Texas and Texas A&M have squared off on the gridiron. Immense pride and tradition exists with these two schools. Tuesday night in Austin, several thousand Orange Blood faithful gathered at the main mall on campus for the annual candlelight hex against the Aggies. Last night in College Station, the annual bonfire. Over 50,000 Aggies came together for what is a very moving experience. And if you're a student on this campus, you were taught to become the 12th man for A&M. And the truest spirit of the Aggie war hymn, Hullabaloo, Connect, Connect. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin. Welcome to a special edition of ESPN's primetime coverage of CFA football. We hope it's been a great Thanksgiving day for you and your family. And glad that you can join us, the ESPN family, as we break bread together on the road tonight here in College Station, Texas. This is the 98th meeting between Texas and Texas A&M. Simply put, one of the fiercest rivalries in all of college football. It's almost a hatred thing. I mean, they genuinely do not like us, and we really don't like them. And that's just the way it is. And, and uh, the five years I've been here, you know, you try to like these guys, and you try to see some good in them but you really can't and and they feel the same way about us and that's what makes it so intense and so uh, so many people want to see that in college football and and, and uh, uh, it's just fun to be a part of it. Mike a lot of kids don't get to play in a game that is this big even bowl games if this is what coaches call truly big game pressure. Ron you're right in this ball game you know your kids when you coach they're going to be wide eyed they're going to concentrate their intensity is going to be great you're going to have a great week of practice preparing for this game and everything you do toward the end of the season is preparing for that rivalry football game and that you're, you're going to see that tonight okay texas a&m is favored in this one this evening what's a key or keys for texas to stay in this thing with them well i think texas can stay close i really do but the first quarter is the key the first quarter has been a great quarter for texas a&m they've dominated against every opponent but for texas it's been a lousy quarter Peter Gardier, the Texas quarterback, has to get off to a good start, get confidence, and produce for him at the quarterback position. They also have to protect the quarterback. They've got to make sure they block Marcus Buckley and Quentin Corriott, and their pass protection holds up. Third man on the telecast tonight, Dr. Jerry Punch. And let's go down to field side and get this report from him. Thank you very much, Ron. The man who could have and would have made a major impact on the Longhorn offense tonight is standing with me, senior left tackle Chuck Johnson. And Chuck, the big question is, can Alan Luther and the other guys on the offensive line protect Peter Gardere? Well, they've played well all year, um, ever since I've been hurt. they played against several good defensive ends, Robert Jones, most particularly from Baylor last week. So I think they can get the job done. As a fifth-year senior, your last time in a Longhorn uniform, you're not playing. But what does this game mean to you? Well, this is the greatest game in college football. People talk about Notre Dame games, Miami games. Texas Texas A&M is the greatest game in college football, and it hurts me a lot to, not to be able to play, but I have a lot of confidence in my team that they can come out on top tonight. The Longhorn motto is three words, whatever it takes, and it will take a lot tonight in that offensive line to be able to make the Longhorn offense effective against the Aggies. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Texas versus Texas A&M, is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. Because it's your money, call 1-800-FOR-CARS or your travel consultant. By BP, a leading producer of oil and gas for America's energy needs. And by GE Spacemaker Entertainment Products, a higher level of entertainment for your kitchen. Field in College Station, Texas. This series, it goes back to the 1800s when they first started playing. This is the 98th meeting between the two schools. And the win will be a factor tonight. You can bet that. Here's the series. Texas leads at 64-28 and 5, but AM has won six of the last seven. And last year, it was the Horns by one at Memorial Stadium. The weather, well, as we said, the, the wind. Not probably, but it will be a factor tonight. They're saying 14, but Mike, and looking at the fan, the flags on top of the stadium, it looks like it is gusting closer to 20 or 25 miles an hour. And Ron, for both defenses, when you have two good defenses and you also put the wind in the quarterback's face, it could be trouble for both offenses. Ted Barnhill to kick it off. Biggins and Simmons, the two deep men for Texas A&M. is underway and with that strong win this one 10 yards out of the back of the end zone this is Texas A&M on offense Greg Hill playing with an injured ankle that happened two days ago we'll see how he is affected by that the wide receivers keep an eye on Tony Harrison leads the Aggies with 29 has six touchdowns and up front 
the man that not only calls the offensive blocking assignments, he has done an excellent job. Chris Dowson is the center. Straight ahead. The fullback has five. Had it off at 10. And the initial first down of the night. Let's meet the Longhorns on defense. He's a good one, and he's going to have to be great tonight to handle this Aggie offense. Shane Dronette on the left side. Boone Powell, number 56, very underrated. We'll call 56 quite a bit tonight. And in the secondary, another youngster that is extremely underrated nationally. He's only a junior. Heavy hitter, Lance Gunn, number 16. surge of the offensive line and you can see the Longhorn defenders simply being pushed back off the ball. You're right Ron and this is a very important series because Texas won the toss and took the win so they want to play defense right off the bat and they want to establish that they can stop this Texas A&M offense. Coach David McWilliams 24th Texas Texas A&M game for him because he played for the Horns then was a graduate assistant then an assistant coach and now the head coach. Out of Cleburne, Texas. Straight ahead, they go with the fullback Carter, Anthony Curl, number 42, the junior from Houston, quickest of the Texas linebackers, steps up to make the hit, but it's an Aggie first down. Texas is so conscious of Bucky Richardson running the option that Doug Carter, the fullback, on the veer play where they just give it to the fullback, is finding some running room in his first couple carries. intended for Brian Mitchell number 18 who had just come in to the ball game and for the first time tonight the Aggie scrimmage with a, either a second or a third down and long good pressure by Anthony curl number 42 on Bucky Richardson they tried to roll him out to the right Texas A&M used a lot of formations because of the experience of Bucky Richardson they do so much on offense but they gave an unbalanced line look to Texas on that play It was the Arkansas game that we did a couple of weeks ago when they had the spring vocal. They had scored in their opening possession 12 of their last 13 games. Incredible. This is Carter, the fullback, and he's going to be wrapped up after a gain of only one. That's Rapp. Chris Rapp, a sophomore who is playing middle linebacker tonight, replacing Michael Pageant, who was lost for the year a couple of weeks ago. On that play, Ron, they offset the fullback, Doug Carter, just to the left. Anytime you see them do that tonight, they're either going to run a trap up inside or they're going to run the trap option with Bucky Richardson coming out after he fakes the Doug Carter optioning with Greg Hill on the outside. The Longhorns take out a defensive tackle. They bring in the extra defensive back with the third down and 10. They like to roll to the right on this formation. Drills it incomplete. Cut it out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And for the first time tonight, the Aggies will send their punting unit on the field. This is what I, I talked about in the open. Texas needs to have a good first quarter. This is a good stop for the Texas defense. Now they're with, they have the wind to their back. Now Peter Gardier and the offense of Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator, need to make something happening positive on their side of the ball. Willie Mac Garza. An average of almost five per return. His longest 14 is the deep man. Davis kicking into this very stiff breeze. Now with the win, he was kicking it up to 70 yards. We'll see what happens here. This is a good kick considering the condition. Garza will go down at the 25. Great coverage by the Texas A&M special teams. To meet the Longhorns on offense. Roderick Walker, a surprise starter tonight because of injuries, has had not lost for the rest of the year. Derek Duke, the speed receiver. Look for him to move around tonight to different locations. Longhorns want to get him the football. And Jeff Boyd, a good one at right guard. He's got his hands full because Sam Adams will be the guy he will be blocking much of the night. And Peter Gardere at quarterback.
Marcus Buckley looked more like the receiver than the defender on that play and obviously Gardere never saw him. Benatulius to attempt the extra point. with 12 minutes 44 seconds left to play in the opening quarter Buckley who has been a nightmare for offenses around the Southwest Conference steps in front of a pass that was intended for Roderick Walker and goes 18 yards for a touchdown we'll take a break the Aggies out early if you look at number 21 Grady Cabinets to the near side 36 Adrian Walker to the right Turn to the 34 by Gerald Crawford. And Pete Gardere comes back on. Mike, how rattled is a youngster after doing something like that in a game this big? Well, you watch here. Alan Luther's going to block on Marcus Buckley, and he's going to block him outside. Peter Gardere, the quarterback, got just a little flare pass, but he didn't loft it high enough. He threw it too low. And it will rattle him because there's not a lot of confidence in this offense as it is. They have to use the win in this quarter. They have to have a positive series. Shane Childers, redshirt freshman out of Spring, Texas, takes the pitch out and crosses the 40-yard line. Jason Atkinson, a sophomore out of Houston, is there to make the stop, and there is a flag down across the way right there in front of the Texas bench. personal foul to call against Texas A&M. Peter Gardier's had one of those years, Ron. Last year, they were behind eight times, and he brought them back seven times to win. This is the foul is a dead ball, personal foul, defense, first down. It's Doyle Jackson. He is our referee tonight from the Southwest Conference. So with that, a running play, and now the 15-yard penalty, and the Longhorns with their deepest penetration of the night, obviously. Adrian Walker, maybe one. Quentin Coria, number 44, the senior out of Baytown Lee, along with Sam Adams, number 95, the freshman out of Cypress Creek. Quentin Correa, just an outstanding linebacker. Watch him just come in, meet the block of the fullback, destroy that block, and then open up Sam Adams, number 95, to make the tackle. That's the job of the inside linebacker, to meet the fullback head on, crush the fullback, and then try to make the tackle. Last time we were in here, it was the Arkansas game, and in that ball game, Quentin Correa was the MVP for the Aggies that we voted. Rolls the pocket, throws it complete, and that's Roderick Walker out of the backfield at the 35-yard line. So important for Peter Gardier. We talk about how bad they've been in the first quarter. You see Peter Gardier's statistics. You can't ask a quarterback to just cure your whole offensive load. They've been hurt so badly this year, injury-wise. That's Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator. But you have to put him in situations where he's going to have some success so that the confidence level of the whole team, not just the offense, but the defense rises along with Peter Gardier. Third down and the line to make just inside the 34. Roderick Walker, and he will have the Texas first down at around the 31-yard line. Jason Atkinson got a handoff. Roderick Walker pressed into service because Butch had not the regular from Kirbyville injured a knee in fact he is having to have surgery on that knee Patrick Wilson another tailback had already been injured so the Longhorns having to go into the depth chart as far as running backs tonight and you can see the numbers what they have not done in the first quarter in their last 13 games that is as astounding as the Aggie game offensive game is offensively Straight ahead with the fullback, and Childers will be caught for the ankle. Atkinson, one of the first men to get a hand on him, and also Patrick Bates. 
coming up to help out on the stop as the Longhorns with a little misdirection on that play. Well, that's a wise choice by Lynn Amity to run the football to try to settle down this Texas A&M defense because they feast on turnovers. And when they get going, they get in a rhythm, and you don't want them in a rhythm. The player that they have to get the football to is Derek Duke. Wide receiver number 48 is the player that Peter Gardier will look to try to find in this pass defense right now. They come back to the short side of the field and shoulders because of the speed, the lateral quickness of those Texas A&M linebackers. That's a tough play to get going with, and he will have maybe a couple. Marcus Buckley, one of the first men out there, along with Atkins. If Texas is to stay in this football game, third downs are going to be so important for Peter Gardier to have some success. Number 11 on the sideline is Chad Lucas. He's a reserve quarterback. Coach Amity said they had what? As many as two and three people sending in signals, but only one guy is hot. One time. guy's live. Childers is not going to have it. That's Buckley after Curry out hitting first. Trying to spread out the AM defense by going to a one back offense and then running inside with Shane Childers, but Quentin Corey out there was no one to block him. There's no lead blocker on the play. And it looks like Texas is making a stand right here trying to get that first down. They've had problems with field goal kicking, so that's why the decision's a little easier for David McQueen. Texas will call a timeout. 849 left to play opening quarter. AM seven at Texas nothing. That's where Mike and I will be in Birmingham. Right now, the situation AM seven and nothing. Fourth down. Ron, they have to have somewhere they roll out to the right here to try to get Peter Gardier away from those pressure of the inside linebackers. Has a man open. Can't hold on. Curtis Thrift, the tight end. Had him open, and Gardner threw the, the pass with too much lead on it. Well, they did what I thought they had to do. They rolled him away. Quentin Coriot was really pressuring him, but Peter Gardner was outside. The ball was right to Curtis Thrift. It should have been a reception, and they should have been able to keep the drive going, but it's an incomplete pass, and now the Texas defense has to respond again. Pete Gardner. If you joined us late on his first play, the first pass that he threw, he threw it in the arms of Texas Aggie Buckley, who goes 18 for a touchdown. Tommy Jeter steps up into the hold on this one, along with Patton, number 92, and Doug Carter will be stopped for no game. Tommy Jeter, number 99, and his defensive line to get a nice surge on the offensive line. They're able to shut the fullback off. A&M's had some success with that. Now look for A&M to come back and run some option plays with Bucky Richardson. Texas crowds at the line of scrimmage, and the Aggies come with the reverse, and Dronette is right there to knock down the play for a loss. Tony Harrison on the reverse, and number 81, Dronette, as we talked about in the lineups tonight, he can be a great one. We saw him against Auburn early in the year, and uh, he's a, he can be somebody who controls the line of scrimmage. He read reverse right away, number 81. Watch him come up and make the tackle. He knew right away it was a reverse. He didn't get sucked in and, and tried to go with the flow of the uh, play, but just waited on the reverse to develop. 6'6", 270 pounds. That's pretty good mobility, Mike. He can play. Third down for the Aggies. They need the 34, and Richardson has the pass tip, and Bucky with not a very smart move right there. He could have given up an interception for a touchdown. That was the run-and-shoot screen all the way. It was a little shovel screen where they don't block anybody on the outside, let them come through. Quarterback just flips the ball to the fullback. Good series by the Texas defense. Davis on his first kick tonight, good for 36 yards. Should have great field position here, Ron, again for their offense. The fourth down call didn't hurt him. They were able to play good defense, and they'll be right back after this punt. Beautiful kick into the wind. Garza looks for some place to run, and with the coverage, there will be no. All 
all the way back to the 35-yard line. 44 yards of the kick and a minus five on the return as Reggie Graham makes the stop. We'll take a break. A lot of people did a lot of that today, pigging out. <laughs> I love that commercial. <laughs> Pig out. Hope it's been a great Thanksgiving for you and your family around the country, wherever you are. The weather here tonight, when we came to the stadium at 3 o'clock, it was 80 degrees. Ball is on the ground, and Texas A&M has recovered at the 41-yard line. That is a miracle. Shea Shafee for Texas came up with the football. I beg your pardon. The Longhorns will hold on to it. For the world, it looked like a maroon jersey guy. I don't want to talk about big plays too early, but you're talking about a big one right here because they have the win with them, Texas. They have to get something to happen offensively. Look at this ball. a has got three, four people around it. They just can't put their hands on it. Big play for Texas to recover that. There's that win we're talking about. I think it's a little stronger than the 14 that they are reporting. Roderick Walker cuts it back upfield, and he will have it at the 43 as Jason Atkinson is out there to make the stop. I mean, people are losing two pays in the stadium. It's uh, more than 14. <laughs> A&M puts so much pressure on your offense, Ron. I'll tell you, the win, knowing that you have that win and your coach, and Lynn Amity knows he has to get a first down here, then to be able to throw the ball down the field because you're only going to have two quarters with this win as stiff as, as it is to throw your deep passes and he knows he doesn't want that time to run out in the first quarter without him having the ball for a lot of times. Pressure from the outside. The quick pass is caught and that's Kenny Neal, number six, a sophomore out of Memphis, Texas. Good for Memphis, Tennessee, I beg your pardon. And let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch for this update. Jerry. Thank you, gentlemen. You know, if they were to select an MVP for the Longhorns this year, it would have to go to head trainer Mike Spanky Stevens, the guy standing behind me there with the burnt orange hat and the white sweater. Of the 44 players that began the two-deep chart for the season, 21 went down to injury, and they lost nine for the season, including six linebackers. They have but four scholarship linebackers left, guys, and, hey, it's hard to fill a team, much less compete in Division I with those kind of losses back up there. Gardere, and he's going to put it up on top, but he's got a man out there, and there comes the flag. That's going to have to be defensive holding, I believe, Mike. Good route on the outside. Just what I was talking about, Lynn Amity knows he has to use that win with those deep throws, and you have to take advantage of that. Just as Duke made his fake to the inside and then took it back out, you could see the jersey pop out. Good ball fake by Gardere to freeze the linebackers and also get the secondary to hold up just a bit. Doyle Jackson the referee and he is making sure where this penalty is going to come from the foul was holding by the defense during a pass play first down let's take a look at the fake by Peter Gardier watch the fake here here's the run he puts the ball on his hip relax now the receivers running and out and up and he lets it go he just threw a little bit too far but the holding occurred and they get the penalty Two penalties against the Aggies for 25 yards. Gardere hit, and he will be sacked by Marcus Buckley. Well, Buckley has been the impact guy so far. If you're going to play against Marcus Buckley, you better block him with a back because I don't think the tackles can handle him. He's too quick. And the games that I've watched this year, watch him at the top of your screen, left-hand screen. He beats the block of the left tackle. You're going to see him come in and make the sack. You just can't block him with a tackle. Either pull a guard out to block on him with a better angle, or you have to put a back on him. Either that or get a white flag. I'll tell you what, I've, we've watched him now. He's just really something of chasing quarterbacks. And second down. Walker breaks it into the secondary. We'll take it inside the 35 to the 34. That's a gain of 12 yards as Sam Adams is holding on. 
Texas have, has had good mix in their offensive play calling. They need a big play. They need Peter Gardier to, again, to get some confidence because their defense is playing well. They have to feel pretty good about the way their defense is playing. There's Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator who coached here at AM 85, 86, and 87. Third down. The line to make is the 30. was covering on the play and Kenny Neal couldn't grab onto it as the Aggies brought everybody. You can see the strategy by Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. When Texas goes to the one back with four receivers, he's going to blitz them with both inside linebackers and try to put pressure on Peter Gardier. Craig Dickey now will attempt a field goal. This one will be from 51 yards out. first look at next year's college freshman phenoms as Scholastic Sports America profiles this season's best high school players plus a look at some great Turkey Day rivalries and scores from Thanksgiving high school games across the country that's coming up immediately after this ball game our score seven to nothing Texas A&M on top and it came by way of an interception by Buckley and returning 18 yards for the touchdown Hill is going to be hit and wrapped up by Chris Rapp. Also, Boone Powell, number 56, is there on the play. Well, Jason Ziegler started the season as the Longhorns' number one kicker. He injured a muscle in his leg, so he was gone. Jason Post is three of five. Craig Dickey, one of six. And Dickey's longest is only 27 yards. I think if David McWilliams had that to do over again, he would have punted the football because he lost a little field position taking a chance on the field goal and they've been so poor this year. 315, remaining opening quarter. Option play. Richardson will go nowhere. Tommy Jeter, senior from Deer Park, Texas, is there to foul that play up. He showed you for, at the start of the uh, show how Texas defense ranked in the country in the top five. They're very strong inside with their defensive linemen. Shane Drenette, 81, Patton, 92, Jeter, 99. All three are very good defensive linemen. And if you're going to build a defense, you build it with your defensive linemen. Total yards, they've held in them to eight yards. But yet they trail. Probably one of the reasons it's so astounding to look at their number four in the nation but are only five and five in the season. Draw play with Greg Hill. And he will be cracked down again at the line of scrimmage. It is Chris Rapp, number 63. People are wondering why that they chose to run the draw, not throw on third and long. But again, the win makes that, makes that decision for you. You don't want to hang the ball up. Your defense is playing very well. Punt the football in 210. You're going to have the ball in the wind with it. Uh, then you'll air it out a little bit throwing the football. David Davis, a couple of punts, but that last one was extremely impressive. 44 yards into what is a very strong win. And that one almost blocked. Garza calls for the fair catch and runs away from it as it will take a Texas bounce back upfield at the 37-yard line. Well, Saturday is a very special day in college football as we are proud to present the annual Iron Bowl Clash between Alabama and Auburn. For the first time on this network, Legion Field on in Birmingham will be the site of one of college football's biggest rivalries. That's at 4 o'clock Eastern. Then at 7 o'clock, it's number one Miami hosting the explosive offense of the San Diego State Aztecs of a game that won't be short of fireworks, we can promise you. And then stay tuned following that one. It is Sugar Bowl bound Notre Dame to travel to Honolulu to take on the Hawaii Rainbows at 10.30 Eastern Time. Triple header this Saturday on ESPN. And Pete Gardner feels the pressure of that Aggie rush again. That's the second sack. At this time, it's Pat Henry. All of a sudden now, when you have a Marcus Buckley coming from the outside, you try to get help on your, with your tackle. That's what I was talking about. You try to get a guard out to help on him, and then you have to single the nose guard, which is number 98, Pat Henry. And that's what happened. There you see a pretty good block on the outside. There you see the nose guard beat the block of the center, makes the tackle for a big sack.
Adrian Walker is the ball carry. That's Atkinson who wraps him up at the 35. And it's going to be third down, Texas. And they need to take it down or out to the 47-yard line as we go under one minute remaining in this first quarter. They're trying to do when they go run the ball to the left side. They're trying to get a tight end on Marcus Buckley, who's 6'4", 225, trying to block him and not let him have the corner where there's just an offensive tackle out there on a short side where he's able to play. Shane Childers was injured on the play. He just left Phil Brown, the 29, has come in replacing him. He's the lone setback. Gardner, he will be sacked for the third time in this opening quarter. Lance Teichelman this time. Also add Coriot for good measure. Well, you just watch the pressure come from the front four. When you get front four pressure, you don't have to bring your linebackers. Look at the twist. Here comes the outside making the play, and then Quentin Coriot finishes it off. Real good pressure on the pass rush by Texas A&M. The foul was a dead ball foul. Ball starts, offense, third down. So the Texas offense comes back on the field. You have to air one out here, Ron. You've got 26 seconds. You have to throw it. You've got to, you've got to take a shot here and try to get the ball down the field. I know the pass rush is coming hard, but it's got to be something off play action where you fake to try to hold people and then hang it up for an outside wide receiver. An incompleted pass, of course, would stop the clock, but if they complete it and it does not pick up the first down, they also are going to have to use a timeout because they're going to lose advantage of the win, and the clock is running. They go with a running play. Adrian Walker fumbles the football, and it's a moot point as Buckley, who has been everywhere, makes the recovery for the Texas Aggies. So that is the end of the opening quarter. Devastating have been the Aggies on defense. They are on top, 7-0. We'll be right back. With Mike Gottfried and Dr. Jerry Punch with you from College Station, Texas. Hope it's been a great Thanksgiving for you and your family. I'm glad to have you along with us. Aggies, 7-0. Hill. And again, there is nothing there. Shane Dronette got a piece of him first, and then Boone Powell came in. And let's take a look at the turnover. Watch 94, Solari. 94, Steve Solari makes the knockout. Ball bounces out. Here comes Marcus Buckley, who's had a career first quarter. <laughs> An interception for a touchdown, and now a recovered fumble. Like there is a magnet in his chest tonight. I look for AM to open it up now on offense with the wind at their back. Bucky Richardson starts throwing a football. Carter, the fullback, goes straight ahead, and he will be met absolutely nothing as Tommy Jeter, number 99. And you're beginning to get the feeling as you watch this, as great as Texas is playing on defense, and they've done this all year, they are playing that bad on offense. Well, that's why you asked how a team could be ranked in the top five and be five and five. And re this is a great defensive football team. And their back has been to the wall the whole first quarter, yet they continue to play. Now they have to stop them on third and long here. Aggies are 0 for 3 so far tonight in third down conversions. They set the screen over the middle, incomplete. Tommy Jeter was the man putting on the pressure. They wanted to get the screen pass to 32 Carter. They can keep the game relatively close, and I think just keep playing as a defense, but they've struggled so much on offense, your defense eventually loses confidence in the offense. Well, you can see the Cabinets was out there for a second, 21, and now 17, Willamac Garza goes back in a single safety. And I can tell you this, in the warm-ups, with the win, this young man was kicking the ball 70 and 75 yards. He's probably to kick it to the arena. <laughs> this is a coverage kick right here. It looks like a, a Necro knuckleball. I tell you, that's a heck of an effort to be able to catch that thing in this win. Garza goes down. It's a 33-yard punt. The Texas will take it over at around their own 10-yard line. Storyline in this one so far, Buckley. A touchdown interception, 18 yards, also a fumble recovery. Total yards, Texas 59, A&M only 9, but the defense scored the touch. 
And the average gain rushed by AM has been one yard per try so far. Kind of feel Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator, is just looking for something to hang his hat on right now. He's showing a lot of formation, trying to find something to go to. Roderick Walker, Coriot, number 44, rides him down. Maybe it's a gain of one. That is four individual tackles for, for Coriot already in the game. I think what I'd do is find out where he lines up, number 44, and I'm going to run the other way. Now, I know he's very good laterally also, but I'm going to make sure I'm not going to run at him. I'm going to try to, to control him a little bit and keep the ball away from him. He's a dominant football player. Shane Childers to the 14. That'll be the end of the way. It's going to be a third down, and the line to make is just across the 20. Again, it's Buckley making the defensive stop for the Aggies. See how your game plan changes now. Texas is kind of coming to a two-back formation with the wind in their face. They closed it up a little bit. They were running some four receivers, and here's the player, Derek Duke, that I feel like the guy that just has to give them the big play tonight. He, they've got to be able to get the ball to him, and he has to break something for him to have the kind of night to stay in this football game. We'll see if they look for number 48 on this play. Third down. Texas 2 of 5 on third down conversions as they keep it on the ground, and Roderick Walker will not get it. He's shy of the 20. Jason Atkinson, number 43, comes up to make the hit. Well, Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, you see him right here, graduate of Youngstown State University. He knows now that Texas is going to settle into a running game. Uh, when they go into the teeth of the wind. So now he brings his defense in a little tighter. Now he flips a little bit more. McClanahan, this is the first punt for the Texas Longhorns so far tonight. And he's got that monster win to kick in, too. High hanging spiral. And it takes a big Texas roll across the 50 yard line to the 47. So we'll take a timeout for the 11 47 remaining until halftime. Texas AM, 7 0. Of CFA football, Texas versus Texas AM, is brought to you by Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. And by Minolta, experience the magic of Maxim only from the mind of Minolta. 11 minutes and 47 seconds remaining until halftime. The Aggies on top, 7 to nothing. They've Defensively, had, both sides of the ball, it's what you expected, isn't it, Mike? It really is. They've had 11 rushes, AM 49 yards. They have to open up. They have to throw the football. It's Mitchell in motion back toward the line of scrimmage, and they come with the option play. Hill will take it into Texas territory, and Anthony Curl, who's a junior linebacker out of Houston, is there to make the stop. Texas plays man coverage. You see Greg Hill, 216 rushes, 11.50, 5.3 yards per carry. Texas plays a lot of man coverage, which means the two corners are going to be on the wide receivers man-to-man. -man. The safeties are the people that have to play the pitch man. Greg Hill on the option. By the way, that is the most prolific as a freshman in the Southwest Conference, and the record that he broke was held by Earl Campbell, so he's ahead of some pretty good company. Quick handoff, and that's Carter. And the fullback is knocked down by Shane Dronette, number 81. Sean Dronette, number 81. Watch him close now. This is going to be a trap play where they're going to block down. There's a trap, but he came inside the block of the offensive tackle to make the play on the trap. Shane Dronette, some people wondering if he might turn pro after this year rather than coming back for his senior year decision that he has to make Richardson runs up into the pocket gets it complete to Hill and he will be knocked down by Cavanis at the 35 yard line but that is enough for the A&M first down when you play a lot of man coverage and the quarterback gets that much time Bucky Richardson went back to set up on the drop back pass nothing was there you're going to see him scramble here in a second Watch the mobility. Here he sets up the pass. You see the Tommy Jeter pressuring him. Now he works up inside, finds the receiver, Greg Hill, number 27, for the first down. A lot of man coverage. Linebacker Curl was Anthony Curl was on Greg Hill. Bucky Richardson, one of five, his first completion of the night. As the pitch goes to Hill, and now they come with the reverse. Beggins back to the short side of the field, and he's knocked out of bounds. And around the 30-yard line. So the Aggies with a little trickery here in the second quarter, and they'll pick up five. 
They're so good against a run, Ron, Texas. It, they had it for just a moment, but Texas showed speed. Bo Robinson, number 45, able to knock the, the uh, reverse out of bounds. It's Texas defense now. I'll tell you, they're impressive. Robert Biggins is a freshman right out of high school. Aldine MacArthur was his high school just north of Houston. Richardson with an audible. You can see how many Longhorns are within a couple of yards of the line of scrimmage. And it's the quick pass, and they have it complete at the 21-yard line to Tony Harrison. Good call and a good throw. What happened on that run is they went to two deep coverage and they were going to fire the corner from the short side of the field. Bucky Richardson again, so experienced. Watch down here at the bottom, the uh, receiver. See the corner come fire? Bucky Richardson reads it, throws the little quick pass for the completion. That's what you get when you get an experienced quarterback. On first down. Kill inside the 20. Looked as though he had a big hole, and then it closed up in a hurry. A Shane Dronette again is there to make the defensive play. And Carter, the fullback for the Aggies, is shaken up. And, in fact, the trainers are out on the field to, uh, to get him. Randy Simmons, number 33, will come into the ballgame. He's a senior out of McKinney. Hill injured an ankle day before yesterday, and from what the coaching staff here at Aggieland said, there were a few people that kind of held their breath for a moment because he has been so exciting. They have so much depth. They can throw two, three tailbacks at you. They just have so much depth in the backfield. This is Simmons. Hill squeezes through a small hole, and he will take it to the 15-yard line. And let's go down and get a report from Dr. Jerry Punch on an injury for Texas. Gentlemen, we talked about all the injuries Texas had coming into this game. They've got another one now. Senior left quarterback, Mark, cornerback Mark Berry, has an Achilles tendon problem. It's been bothering him for a couple of weeks. He was expected to start tonight. He's being used very sparingly now. He's not in the game. May come back in later on, but right now it's the Achilles tendon. It's a problem. Back up there. Thank you, Jerry. This is the deepest penetration by the Aggies tonight. The touchdown that they scored, of course, came from the defense. Hill. Cuts back up into the hole. What a cut. There was no place to go to the outside, and he found daylight to the inside. But he is not, I don't believe, going to have the first down. Boy, uh, you're talking about a cut there. Greg Hill <laughs> made an outstanding cut because Texas had penetration up the field. See Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. Watch the cut by Greg Hill. Watch the block by number 33, Randy Simmons. Now there's the cut. Cuts up inside. There's a missed tackle. It's close to the first down. Anthony Curl really belted him down, but I tell you, that play was going to head out, and it came back in, and we'll see right now if the uh, freshman has picked it up. Not going to be a little bit short. Do you go for it, Mike, or do yeah, you I kick think the you, field goal? I think you go for it. The way you're playing defense, I think you go for the score, and, you, and Bucky Richardson, you take him on a quarterback sneak. He's 6 2 221 pounds is, is a strong he's just like a running back I'm gonna put the ball in his hands either that or an option play with him carrying it this is the ninth play of this Aggie drive play to your defense getting key games like this big games you got to take some chances drawn at down on the bottom of the pile but it appeared as though yes he will have it first and 10 a and m just outside the 10. liked him all year as a quarterback you're talking about a big quarterback at 6'2 221 pounds probably will be a running back in the pros uh, wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if somebody shows me a roster one day where he's a linebacker <laughs> i mean he's just a tough physical football player goes to Hill. Get at the line of scrimmage. That's drawn in. I tell you, as Buckley has played on the other side of the football for the Aggies, so has Drawnett, number 81 for the Texas Longhorns. He already has a handful of tackles. He gets so much penetration in the, on the offensive line. Both the AM offensive guards, John Ellison and 
Tyler Harrison have a broken wrist and they have a hard time locking out because of that today and they're having problems with pass protection but it also looks like they're having problems blocking Jeanette. Richardson now he may check out to the yeah, fade, Ron. I, I think he has. He saw the pressure, or the potential pressure, and they go with the pitch, and Hill, it's Bo Robinson, one of the first men there, along with Rapp, to make the tackle. Ron, what happened on that play was that Texas jumped into the 46 defense, and almost every college team I've seen when you see the 46 defense and you see the eight-man front, you like to check off to the option because the pros run the 46, but they can't, supposedly, you can't stop the option with that defense. But they were able to come off the blocks and make the play. Timeout on the field, 644 until halftime. Aggie seven and the Longhorns nothing. Miami hosts San Diego State. Auburn meets rival Alabama. And Notre Dame visits Hawaii. Live on ESPN. David McWilliams faces as Texas fight breaks out in the background. And on the other sideline, R.C. Slocum looks on. And this is extremely big, I think, for Texas. Mike, as far as this first half is concerned, with this third down. Oh, it's big. They played, they played strong on defense. Now they got to look at possibly some type of... A play action pass where they try to get the ball to tight end number 86, great short. Mitchell in motion. Ducky Richardson had to get back on that football. And now the special teams will come from the sideline as a missing connection on the snap. And Terry Venatulius will come on to attempt this field goal for the Aggies. This young man has done an outstanding job this year as you see his numbers 12 of 17 but actually with the wind behind him maybe this is a tough angle from the 15 yard line actually they're going to say 26 yards Sean Garnett remember he blocks and field goals Shane Dronette in that game against Auburn he did he had a block Ben Atulius knocks this one through from 26. Aggie cannon sounds. We were joking yesterday. We're out here running this morning that we were looking at the trees up there. There's one tree that does not have as many leaves on it. And that's the one where the, the cannon is focused. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Ron. A lot of interested people in this field tonight. And one of them is Chuck Knobloch, 1991 American League Rookie of the Year, and an Aggie, a two-time All-American baseball player here at Texas A&M. And all this this towel waving must remind you a little bit of those Homer hankies up there in the Metrodome. Yeah, it does. It, it, it reminds me of uh, the way we played in the World Series. Uh, this is definitely a World Series atmosphere, and uh, it's just great to be back here. You know, all the noise you had in the Metrodome and down in Atlanta, the Tomahawk shop, you, you had to be accustomed to that with all the racket they have for these Southwest Conference games. Sure, I got used to it. You know, this, this crowd lent a hand and uh, prepared me for a World Series-type crowd, and, uh, you know, it's great here. It's a great atmosphere. Uh, it's great for college football in the Southwest Conference. You come home a hero, a member of a world championship team. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chuck Knobloch, 1991 American League Rookie of the Year. Back up there. Thanks, Jerry. Again, the kick with the win. This is going to go out of the back of the end zone. And let's go back to the studio for an update. And Chris Fowler. Chris, what you got for us? Okay, Ron, if you missed it, a couple of NFL scores today. The Lions beat the Bears. They're tied atop the Central at 9-4. And, and Dallas, behind a big game for Michael Irvin, beats Pittsburgh 20-10. We'll have highlights of those ball games at halftime. Plus the halftime blitz, news and notes for the weekend games, and the who's number one debate. Mr. Gottfried has an opinion on that. We'll hear from that at halftime. Okay, Chris. By the way, when Knobloch was introduced to this crowd before the game, that, that's the largest cheer with the exception of the Buckley touchdown that we've heard today. He got a standing ovation. Gardeer whips the pass, Kenny Neal, and they say incomplete, out of bounds at the 32. A little late getting the ball. To Neal, number six, Kenny Neal. David McWilliams knows the frustration that uh, he feels with his offense right now. You watch Peter Gardier. Here's the fake. Outside, he's able to get outside the rush. Here's the throw to Kenny Neal, just a little too close to the sidelines. Feet come down out of bounds. Close. 10 to nothing to AM on top of what has been a very rapid first half with both teams running so much. We are not even one hour into this ballgame. Roger 
Mike Walker. And he will only have a couple of Sam Adams. You can see number 95 coming in to destroy that play. And now Texas with a third down and short. And here's what the Longhorns are going to have to be so careful of in this quarter going into the win. And the fact is <laughs> you can't be punting from this deep because you're going to give up good field position every time. Well, you can't continue to give Bucky Richardson the AM offense at good field position. They're eventually going to cash in on you. Have to make some key throws. We're going to take a timeout. Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator, now as David McWilliams comes down to talk with him, they have called a timeout. So we'll take a break. 5.23 until halftime. We'll be back at College Station after this. Third down for the Longhorns, and what they need is the 30-yard line if they want to hold on to the football without having to punt it away. They're two of six on third down conversions. Gardner running for his life, and he will have the first down out at the 34-yard line. You remember last year that he had the streak to the outside, and he took it for a touchdown, which proved to be huge in the Texas win over a &M. Well, he had his tight end, Curtis Griff, down the middle open. Just didn't have time. You see the pressure coming from the right side. But the speed outrun Quentin Corey out to pick up the first down. Wise choice by Peter Gardner, the quarterback. Sam Adams, number 95, finally makes the tackle have to find a way to slow that pressure down. There's got to be a screen, a trap, something to slow down the pressure of the AM defense. Gardner's pass is caught. Going to be a gain of only a couple. Justin McLemore, number 22. He's a redshirt freshman out of Waxahachie, Texas. It is on the receiving end. Tried to throw the middle screen run there to McLemore, number 22, but it just happened too quick. Didn't get time to set up the lineman downfield. Pete Gardier, a junior out of Houston Lee High School, six feet 189. Is an outstanding high school baseball player. It also led the city of Houston for a couple of years in punting. They don't use him as a punter. Straight ahead. I'm not so sure that that wasn't a broken play. Bobbled snap or something as Gardere took it straight ahead. And number nine, Marcus Buckley, wrapped him up. And again, the Longhorns look at a third down and long. Well, these fans seem to yell louder when Texas has the ball. So I mean, you can't, it's tough to communicate. And uh, I think the center snapped the ball a little too quickly that time. A little surprise for the quarterback. Huh? It's a surprise, and you <laughs> make sure you get on it. <laughs> you can see the pressure coming from the outside, and Gardner steps up, and he will be sacked again. That is the third time that the Texas quarterback has been sacked tonight, and at the bottom of all that is Big 95, Sam Adams. Sam Adams is in there, and also Marcus Buckley came from the outside again. The left side of your screen, you're going to see number nine. You can't block him with an offensive tackle. They try to get a back on him, but the, he beat the block of the offensive back, came in, was able to make the play on Peter Gardier. Well, you try a tackle, you try a guard, you try a back. McClanahan's punt, his first one good for 34 yards, and this one is fair caught down at the 33. Well, ESPN's coverage of the Davis Cup Finals between the United States and France begins tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. The matchups are Andre Agassi and against Guy Forget and Pete Sampras versus Henri Leconte. It all gets underway at 7.30 a.m. tomorrow morning on ESPN. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Dr. Jerry Punch. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. 2.48 until halftime. And the Aggies have owned this one 10 to nothing. Texas defensively has played well, but the offense has not arrived yet. Greg Hill in the pitch. 
and wrap the middle linebacker along with Boone Powell combined to make a stop on him. Well, I'm surprised at A&M right now, but I think there's a reason for what I, I figured they, they would be throwing with the wind, let Bucky Richardson air some passes out, but there's two things that might be in that thinking. Number one, Bucky had a bruised shoulder, didn't throw a lot in practice yesterday. I don't know how much that's affecting him. The other is when you're playing so well on defense, you just have a tendency sometimes to turn it over your defense. But I just am surprised to just figure somewhere along the line when you have the wind at your back, you're going to cut it loose. Open up your passing game. Richardson wants to throw this time. Pumps one. He's got a man wide open on a blown coverage, and oh my goodness, he missed Brian Mitchell. Mitchell looked like the first guy after the workout. Oh, oh he was God. the only guy at the workout. <laughs> I think what Bucky Richardson, he overstrided number one, but he didn't get any air under the ball, didn't get it high enough. Watch this. He rolls out. He's going to pump. Now the receiver takes off down the field, but he throws a flat ball. He needs to put it up in the air and let the receiver run under it because there's no one else out there. The player who had stumbled was Mark Berry, number nine, the player that Dr. Jerry Punch was talking about, who had suffered an injury and had been used sparingly. And Texas was blocking him out of the ball game. Obviously, that injury he can't play with. Pass is intercepted by Boone Powell. And the Texas linebacker will take it inside the 25 and down to the 20-yard line. 21 yards on the return. That's what I was saying about when you want to play your defense. But Bucky Richardson threw that one off his back foot. Just a bad throw and a bad choice by Bucky. throw the ball off the wrong foot and there's the interception that sets up great field position for the Texas offense running play we go for four now five as Phil Brown a sophomore out of Commerce Texas comes into the game we didn't know if we'd see him he's been plagued with an injury but uh, he's in to carry on this one Big, big series for Peter Gardier in this Texas offense. Defense gave them what they needed, a big turnover and great field position into the win. But they got the ball in about the 16-yard line. They've got to turn this into a touchdown. Longhorns trailing 10 to nothing and an opportunity to get on the board. And again, they go back to the short side of the field, and there is nothing. Coriot is the first man there to make the hit. And then you can see Sam Adams, number 95, coming in. And a flag has come in late. Their idea running into the short side of the field is to get Marcus Buckley on That's a tight end. That will be a face mask call against the Aggies. So with 113 remaining until halftime, Mike, this penalty, I am not sure where that thing is spotted. It's going to be very close to a first down. But if you're Texas, you get this down over. Do you go on into the end zone now with the pass? I think you do. I, I don't think, and, I, and may, they may prove me wrong, but I don't think you can run it in on the Texas A&M defense. I think you're going to have to have some type of play action pass. I think this could be a first down right here. Some type of play action pass after you pick up the first down. Now they got a first down. The foul is a five yard face mask by the defense. First down. From where the ball has been spotted, as you can see, it is just outside the 10. So conceivably, Texas could pick up a first down without scoring. They could. I, I just feel like you need a play action pass to get it in there. Now they've had success running to the left side. Let's see if they keep going with it. Phil Brown with the running play takes it for a couple, maybe three. Texas has one timeout remaining on for the half. Clock is running with 48, now 47 seconds. Pete Gardier looks to the far sideline, gets his offensive call. Blitz coming from the middle, lofts the pass to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Derek Duke is the player that he wanted. Talk about good defense now. Peter Gardier's throwing to the corner. Three-step drop and hang it up in the corner. 
for Derek Duke. Look at the coverage by Kevin Smith. Nice ball was thrown well. First team All-American, Kevin Smith. Now, Ron, you need some kind of rollout because you're going to get pressure up inside. You have to bring Peter Gardier to the right side and try to roll him away from that pressure. You see the pressure. Gardier will be sacked, and now a flag comes down. That is thrown at the line of scrimmage. Well, actually, Texas gets somewhat of a reprieve here because with the illegal procedure, I assume he is saying it was a dead ball foul, so they'll get third down over if it was a dead ball foul. Ron, I'm going to go back again. They have to roll him out. You can't stay inside with this defense. They're just too quick inside, and the offensive line of Texas cannot handle them. Coming up at halftime, the halftime blitz. Also, those NFL games that were played today. And also some highlights from the Pitt Penn State game. Twenty-eight seconds. Twenty-eight. It's a success that Bob Davia, you see him right here. He's talking. He thinks it's going to be some type of option pass play. He's going to bring him up inside. You can see the signal he's given right there. He's turning like a key. He wants uh, Quentin Corriott up inside. Again, I, I feel like that they have to try to get Peter Gardier away from that middle of that stunt. You know, I like the way Doyle Jackson has handled this first half. There's a lot. There are a lot of distractions. Both coaches uh, hollering on the field, everything. He doesn't look, his mind is made up, very decisive, and we move right along. It's, he's done a good job. He's in control. He communicates, exactly and right. uh, he's yeah. in control of this football game. And now you can hear that crowd. It is caught by Neal at the one and a half yard line. That will not be enough for the first down. You remember I said that Texas could get a first down without scoring, but they have to call the timeout to stop the clock with 17 seconds. And now some real decisions. So let's take a break. 10 to nothing. Aggies on top. We'll be right back. Number 17 ticks left on the clock until halftime. They did bring in the chains to measure. Texas is about, what, two-thirds of a yard away from picking up a first down. they got to get the first down, Ron, with some kind of running play, then kill the clock. Peter Gardier step up there because the clock will stop if they pick up the first down, kill the clock, and it gives them a shot. And they have no timeouts yet. Touchdown, Texas. Roderick Walker. Shoulders and thrift with some awfully good blocks to pave the way. Now you credit David McWilliams with that call. Now that's a gutty call. He's got a fourth and one, but he knows his offense isn't going to get these many opportunities to score against this great defense. Took advantage of it, went for the fourth and one for the touchdown. Fred Dickey to attempt the extra point for the Longhorns. And he is true. So 13 ticks left in the clock now. And let's take one more look at the touchdown run by Roderick Walker. Fourth and one yard. They figured that AM would bring the defense down inside. They're going to pitch the ball out to Roderick Walker. There's a good block on the corner, good block on the strong safety. Roderick Walker just stretches out, makes the play. Curtis Strip, number 84, started this play with a good block. The tight end, there you see his block. Now you're going to see a block by. Shane Childers, number 34. Watch his block now. The fullback's block. Steps up inside, gets on the linebacker, allows Roderick Walker to become airborne and get in the end zone. So we have a 10 to 7 ball game with 13 seconds left until halftime. Clovis Hale talking with some of the offensive linemen on the far side. It's Wayne Whetstone, number 75, that he's visiting with. 
They accomplished what they needed to accomplish in the first half. They got out of here in a close ball game, and as badly as their offense played, their defense picked it up for them and came up with a big play. Number 49, Ted Barnhill. He is a junior out of Brenham, Texas. He will kick it off. And just as though the as the Aggies had done a squib kick rather than kicking it up in to the wind. Here's the scoring drive by Texas. Six plays following the interception by Boone Powell. 20 yards, one minute, 38 seconds. Roderick Walker with the two yard touchdown. So turnovers have led to both touchdowns. Neither team has been able to muster a touchdown against, well, take it back, right there. No points, right? No, but you, I, defense, I know what you but the win, too. You're, you're right. They, they haven't been able to use the win in the two quarters of the half. Lucky Richardson will go down on one knee, and these two teams will head to the locker room. It is halftime of this, the 98th meeting between Texas and Texas A&M. We're at halftime. The Lone Star waving in the breeze. In College Station, Texas. We'll be back. Close in the first half, and your kids have played one whale of a ball game. It's well, close. Well, they have, other than the one mistake we made earlier where they got the easy touchdown. You know, we're going far. We've been going far. We're going to continue, and I'm proud of our players. We just got a great second half to go out and play. Well, a second half coming up. Coach, what can you do about protecting the quarterback in the second half? Well, that's something we talked about at halftime that we've got to improve on and get better protection for guard there. Good luck to you, Coach. Let's go back upstairs to Ron Franklin. Thanks, Jerry. 10 to 7. Aggies lead it. We'll be back with a second half kickoff in just a moment. Pete Gardier warming up on the far sideline. You can see the numbers right there. The youngster got off to a shaky start, but uh, overcame some of those obstacles, and, and the wind continues to blow. Mike, we set off the top of the telecast. It would be a factor, and it has been so far. What well, has, and the coaches, the offensive coordinators, have to use the wind as their advantage when they have the ball with the wind at their back, and that's when you have to open it up and throw the football. Ted Barnhill to kick it off to open this third quarter. Is up 16 to 23 miles an hour. And that sounds more like it. Let's go back and take a look at the first half stats and look at those numbers right there. I think the key statistic there is AM with 30 yards rushing. That's only 1.5 yards rushing attempt. They're eighth in the country in rushing offense, yet the Texas, de Texas defense has completely shut them down. Passing yards both low. Texas 29 yards, 20 for AM. And turnovers led to both scores or touchdowns. The one interception that went for a touchdown, Boone Powell's interception led to the Texas touchdown. And then going into the win in the third quarter. Greg Hill muscling forward. Anthony Curl was the first man to get there. Then Shane Dronette, number 81, to help finish him off. You know, Mike, at halftime, there were some questions by some people around in the in the press box if maybe Richardson was having some problems with his arm, and some of those people did not realize that he had not thrown yesterday. But we have, we, he, that's not the kind of spirals that, that we saw him throw in the first two games we did for Texas a and this year. Running play, hit at the line of scrimmage, Boom Powell on Carter. And he stops him in his tracks. It's going to be a third down, Texas a and and they need the 30-yard line. Ron, it's either his shoulder or it's the fact that they're going to play to their defense because they haven't thrown the ball like we've seen Texas A&M in the games that we've had them on TV before. And in practice the other day when we watched him, he did not throw one new ball. Drills the pass. It is complete to Tony Harrison for the first down. And now a flag comes down.
Here you're going to get a look at the route by Tony Harrison, number 23. Now, this is a nice, safe route. Man coverage on the outside by Grady Kavnis. There's the curl route. And Bucky Richardson with a good throw. And then the penalty tacked on after. Fifteen yards tacked onto the play for unsportsmanlike conduct. In the pack, the penalty takes it out across the 45. Greg Hill back into the boundary. Will have four, now five yards. Bo Robinson, and also you could see number 25, Bubba Jacks, come flying into the pile to help out on the hit. And Doug Carter with a good block on that play. Bubba Jacks, the free safety, number 25, just darted up inside to make the tackle on the toss play. Bubba Jacks was the hero of this year's Oklahoma win at the Cotton Bowl, picking up a fumble and taking it the distance for the touchdown. Former option quarterback in high school. Conroe High School. Option. Pitch comes to Hill. It's on the ground, and he does the smart thing by just getting down in the football. Tom, with both these defenses playing so well, the team usually, I believe very strongly, the team that establishes the run wins the game. I think in this game, the team that establishes the pass is going to win this football game. David McWilliams, five years at Texas, 31, 25, and zero. No ties. Hope it's been a fun Thanksgiving day for you and your family. So we got our ESPN family together and, and had turkey this afternoon. Had a big time before coming to work. Richardson pops now he's going to run it. Here's where he is so dangerous. And he breaks the tackle and comes across the 43. That's enough for the first down. That's the reason he is so valuable to this football team. Oh, you're so right. He faked the toss play, play action, and it looked like he was going to come back and throw a screen. Now watch the little quick, but he's pumping. He's going deep, but the pressure caused him to come out and run the football. Now he turns into a running back and is smart enough to go back past the yard marker and pick up the first down. Anthony Curl almost looked as though he tried to knock the ball out of his hand rather than lock up on the tackle. Richardson, that pass. Inside the 10. Bucky Richardson is AM's opening up the third quarter. They're trying to open up their game plan a little bit more. You see Bucky Richardson, but he doesn't have a lot on this football. Ball hangs up, which leads me to believe that his shoulder is bothering him. Greg Sharp with the reception and picks up valuable yards after the catch. Just misplayed by the secondary of Texas. Bubba Jacks tried to hit him hard, but did not lock his arms. And the Aggies with the first and goal. 32 yards on that pass play to Short at the tight end. Greg Hill. Ball is loose. AM has recovered it. Texas had a shot at it, and they tried to pick the football up rather than recover it. Those are things that will give the coach a little more gray hair on the sidelines. David McWilliams, as he paces the sideline, knows he had a chance at that football. Defender tried to pick the football up. Here's Bucky Richardson on the handoff. Watch Greg Hill work his way inside. The ball comes loose. Now Texas has a chance to recover, tries to pick it up. Bubba Jacks tried to pick the ball up instead of make the recovery after Rapp had knocked it out, and Dexter Wesley made the recover for the recovery for the Yankees. Hill at the three, now the two-yard line. That's drawn out in the bottom of the pile. R.C. Slocum on a third down call, and I've seen these guys play enough that if this is a time where you think option play with Bucky Richardson, where you have the threat of the dive, the fullback carrying the ball, you've got the threat of Bucky Richardson on the corner and the option pitch. Third down, Texas A&M. They come to the open side of the field, and he scores. And they're throwing 
Patton here at Kyle Field. Terry Benatulius with the extra point attempt for AM. Knocks it home, and let's take one more look. As Texas AM moves out on top by 10 points again. Carter with the block. And Hill coming for the sideline. Dives for the cone, and he gets it. Time out on the field. Aggies by 10. Texas A&M 17, Texas 7. Both ball clubs having to kick it on the ground into the wind. That is alive. Adrian Walker will knock it out of bounds. Who had it last? It's going to be Texas ball. A&M touched it, but they did not secure it. Had they, it would have been their football. the ball bounce around here now when you squib kick the football into a win you get that kind of bounce and then just Texas just, just not able to come up with the ball lucky it went out of bounds for him Larry Jackson came very close to making the recovery for the Aggies but Texas takes over with horrible field position just short of the eighth in fact this is their worst field position of the night and steps up to make the hit on Roderick Walker. And let's take another look at the touchdown. Well, the key blocks when you run a toss sweep will be the block by both tight ends. Number 87, Jason Matthews. Watch him first. He'll block out the outside backer. Now watch the block of Greg Sharp on Willie Mac Garza. And then it's just a foot race to the corner. Greg Hill wins it. Scoring drive, 10 plays, 80 yards, 501. And the Aggies scoring going into the win. Big. Michael. Big drive, and the, the first drive of the third quarter is very important. Big drive for AM. Walker again. Texas continues to try to run back into the boundary because I think they feel as though they have a man or two advantage there, the way the Aggies play their defense. But as you can see, the Aggies have reacted to it very quickly and very well. Well, the advantage is they're trying to get Marcus Buckley, number nine, who's a player who's not used to playing on a tight end. They're trying to get Curtis Thrift, number 84, blocking Marcus Buckley. But they're able, Marcus Buckley's able to hold up at the point of attack, and then the linebackers from the inside are making the tackle. to wonder when it was going to happen, Mike. I right, talked about trap and you talk about drawing screen to try to hold down the pass rush. This is an adjustment that they made at halftime. You have to be sure of this because they know what kind of look they're going to get. There's Peter Gardier and then the lead block by the fullback and a big first down by Texas. Nice call by Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator of Texas. Turk McDonald, number 55, a junior out of DeSoto, Texas, with a good block to center. That's how you take care of the pass rush. You have to slow it down. You have to slow it down with traps, draw screens. Roderick Walker out to the 31. Lance Teichelman, sophomore out of Austin, Texas, makes the stop for the Aggies. 17 to 7, AM on top. And 750 left in this third quarter. As sure as we're sitting here. Texas isn't going to win this football game unless they throw the football because they need big plays. They're not going to run the football consistently against this AM defense. They have to throw the football and they have to throw it with the wind at their back. And they've got 737 to do it in. Four of nine, one interception for 29 yards. Those are the numbers on the passing. And Mr. Correa steps in and says, that's going to be the end of the way, Mr. Gardere. Wow. When you throw the football, you got to pass protect and you got to block Quentin Coriat. You've got a counter play going where you have, you've got your lineman pulling and you've got a back to pick up Quentin Coriat. Neither one of them pick him up and he sacks Peter Gardier. That's the fourth time that the Aggies have gotten to Texas quarterbacks tonight. Coriat stands a real good opportunity to go over his average in this one already with seven tackles. 
There's a better inside linebacker in the country. I haven't seen him. Roderick Walker. He will be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Eric England. AM has just completely taken over this game at the start of the third quarter. Their offense with a great drive, and the defense just shutting down Texas's offense. Kelly McClanahan to kick. Two kicks for an average of 33 so far in this one. And the Aggies have the return on. Driving kick to Smith down at the 27. Breaks it, and he's going to score. his season high he had one earlier for 71 and now this one goes 73 yards and the Aggies have broken it open here in the third quarter in the third quarter their offense has established superiority their defense has and now their special teams added to all three of them have come out firing here in the third quarter Puts the Aggies up by a score of 24 to 7. One more look. He breaks it past Lance Gunn, and then it is all over but the shot. And there's plenty of that here in Aggie Land. We'll take a break. 559 left in the third. Smith, his second touchdown return on the punting team this year. His longest was 71, and now he has added a couple on to that. 73 yards on a return. And on the other side of the field, the frustration on the part of number 42, Anthony Curl out of Houston. And when we were over there at practice at Texas the other day, a couple of players told me, they asked the seniors, how'd you do against Oklahoma and AM? That's 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 very important to the senior football players and the entire football team of Texas. And they keep kicking on the ground into that wind. Walker picks it up, and he's going to be just wrecked at the 21-yard line. Larry Jackson on the special team. Let's hear from Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry. Gentlemen, we heard from David McWilliams coming out at halftime. He said for his Texas offense to be effective, they're going to have to be able to protect Peter Gardere, particularly from that weak side rush. That means probably keeping a back or maybe both backs in to try to protect him from the weak side. Also look to him to try to exploit some of the Aggie pursuit by running some misdirection and maybe even reverse to try to get back in this ball game. Let's go back upstairs. Jerry, those are good points. I also think they might try grenades. They don't have time to run a reverse. I'll tell you, the way they're penetrating. Gardere up top. Complete to Kenny Neal. And the sophomore from Memphis steps out of bounds just shy of the 40. Neal is the only player on the Texas roster who is not from the Lone Star State. Well, I'll tell you what, this Texas, I'm so impressed with Texas football. Is Kenny Neal, Memphis, Tennessee. Sophomore split in. But I said before, when you have a coaching clinic, a visited a coaching clinics all over the country, the Texas high school coaches are unbelievable in the teaching and the, the great job they do in this state. And uh, they attend these clinics. I mean, just so well attended. They just, football means so much to the Texas high school coaches. I want to say thanks to the Houston Touchdown Club. I got to fly down for their annual show, and it's a great one. It's the A&M and Texas luncheon that they put on every year. They fly in both head coaches, fly them right back so they can get to practice. But 800 people yesterday, half in orange and white, half in maroon and white, and uh, it is a, a really fun event. Flew down there with uh, David McWilliams, came back to Tech to uh, College Station with R.C. Slocum, and had some good visiting time with him. As you look at Marcus Buckley being helped off, he is okay, but he's getting a standing ovation. He has a touchdown tonight. 
and he also has a fumble recovered. One other word about the Houston Touchdown Club and the job that those guys do that you really have to appreciate, which backs up your point. This next week, they honor the high schools in the Houston area, and the area coaches help them pick the all-offense and all-defensive players, and Mike, the kids that have won those awards have gone on not just to be All-Americans, but many have gone on to be All-Pros. I'm sure a lot of them are on this field tonight. Yeah. Gardere going to go long, and it is incomplete. McLemore had it in his hands, and he dropped it. Pretty good coverage by Derek Frazier, but it looked as though McLemore had a chance, and then he got turned around a little bit. I think the interesting thing here, Jerry Punch was talking about, look at this. What they now are going to is a front. They're using all their blockers, two tight ends. It's a one-receiver route. That's how they're trying to block Texas A&M. There's only one receiver out on this play. That's how much respect they have for the defense of Texas A&M. Gardner, 5 of 11, one interception. Walker misses the pitch out and then gets on the football. And guess who's on his back? Number 44, Quentin Correa. I tell you, there's something about a confidence level on your offense, and this this offensive football team's confidence level is very low. Watch Quentin Corrett. He just fires through. No one picks him up. The toss sweep is fumbled, and he was close to recovering that football. He can run. That was a dead start, and he took off. Corey out of 6'4", 243, senior from Baytown Lee. He'll be playing on Sundays next year. Yeah. Atkinson coming on the blitz. Gardner going to be knocked down for another loss. Marlon Haynes this time. Number two got to him. Wow. I'm telling you, in the snap of the football, there are more AM players having a reunion around Peter Gardner than you can imagine. I mean, he has zero chance to get that football away. It's what they call meet you at the quarterback. Now you got to face this guy again. He just returned 173 yards. This one is off the side of McClanahan's foot. And let's see where they're going to spot it. It will be marked down at around the 45 yard line. So let's take a timeout. 409 left in the third. Aggies by 17. 24 to 7. Aggies are leading. the fullback goes straight ahead for a couple it's Chris Rapp sophomore out of Dallas number 63 of the stop Dr. Jerry Punch what do you have for us well gentlemen it's not good news but it isn't that bad news either Marcus Buckley the linebacker you saw go down a minute ago he's the leading sack leader for the Aggies has a one plus sprain of the MCL that's the medial collateral ligament of his left knee he will not play anymore tonight he should be able to play in the Cotton Bowl and we have it not really that significant an injury but they won't use him tonight unless they absolutely have to back upstairs okay thanks Jerry that would be a significant loss for the Cotton Bowl game, obviously, if he was unable to go. Chris Rapp has just picked up his 11th tackle. They had just handed us a note saying that he was in double figures. 11 stops for Rapp, and he is the man who's having to fill in for Padgett, only a sophomore. Oh, for his first start, you're, you're talking about a big-time game, and you're talking about a defense. I mean, you look at their record, 5-5. Five and five. You look at this defense. They've played some serious football all year. They've been in every game because of their defense. Leon Fuller, the defensive coordinator for the Texas Longhorns. Got to visit with him the other day, and he was extremely worried about having to come over here and, and play this ball game. Hill. Anthony Curl will stop him, but not before Texas A&M picks up the first down behind the blocking of Wesley and Tyler Harrison on that left side. Well, they just have dominated since they've come out in the second half in every area. Greg Hill with 18 rushes, 46 yards, one touchdown. AM on a roll. Hill again as the Aggies try to work him a bit more. 
Chris Rapp, who came over to get a piece of him, along with Patton. James Patton, also a senior. 6'3", 290, out of League City, Texas. Extremely strong, and another youngster, one of many on both sides of the ball that the NFL scouts are looking at. About to go under two minutes in this third quarter. In two minutes, the Aggies will have the win behind them. Not that they need it. Hill tries to turn the corner. He'll have a couple. Boone Powell, who has an interception tonight, will take it for a couple. It's going to be third down, and A&M needs the 34. Ron, when you play in these rivalries or you're coaching them, if you win it, you enjoy it. The next night, you start getting into recruiting, and uh, you're off trying to get 25 more players. But if you lose it, it's something you've got to live with for 365 days till you get another shot at these old boys because, I mean, it is an important game you don't want to lose if you're coaching in this game. Aggies are 4-4 four four this half on third down conversion. That pass, too tall. There's something wrong with Bucky Richardson throwing that. I think the shoulder is has to be giving him problems because he's he's pushing the football. He's not throwing it. He's not cutting loose. He's just having problems with his shoulder. So it'll be punting time. David Davis comes on to kick for Texas A&M. Willimack Garza drops off in a single safety. Willimack out of Refurio, Texas, probably one of the more mispronounced of Texas cities because of its spelling R E F U G I O. Very high kick going to the far side and takes an Aggie roll. That's going to go out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. 30 yards in the kick, but the effectiveness of it, it will go dead at the nine. Well, be sure to catch all the NFL action on Sundays on ESPN. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann will be there. NFL's Game day at noon tomorrow. Well, actually, it says tomorrow. This copy normally is for Saturday night, but we all know this is Thursday. So a couple of tomorrows on down the road on Sunday. And then you'll see the best recap in television on NFL primetime at 7 o'clock. And then Sunday night, NFL's coverage uh, continues this weekend at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. It's the Raiders against the Chargers, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Dardere in the grasp of Eric England first. Eric is a big sophomore out of Sugarland, Willow Ridge. Willow Ridge, another program that sends uh, a lot of uh, good players into the colleges down in the Houston area. coming from the outside to go straight ahead with Shane Childers on the carry and Solari. When you play against this A&M defense, you better keep them out of a rhythm. And right now they are in a rhythm. They're playing their own song because they know exactly what Texas is trying to do to them. And they're just beating, uh, beating them on the blocks. They're uh, coming from the outside. They're pressuring them. Uh, just a really dominating the Texas offense. Two seconds down to one, and that is the end of the third quarter. They're standing here at Kyle Field, so let's take a break. Aggies 24 and Texas 7. The final quarter. And you see those 12th man times. Gardere gets it complete to Kenny Neal. Did he catch it out of bounds? Yes. Steve Solari was coming with the pressure, number 94. He was playing and replaced. He replaced Otis Neely, who was the, usually the starter there, but sprained his ankle against SMU. And Solari has entered this game, played pretty well. Pressure to quarterback. Kelly McClanlahan, who had a leg injury earlier this year. Kevin Smith, and this time into the win. Texas A&M with the return on the win, really holding this one up. Now takes a big Texas bounce, but will not make it to midfield. Down to the 46. Higgins will touch it down. It's a 37-yard punt. 
Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us now? General, we're not trying to make any excuses for the Texas people. We told you they had significant injuries. What I wanted to show you here was a piece of what looks like Darth Vader's body armor. Actually, it is a piece that is being worn here by Robert Hensley. And it, it's a shoulder subluxor inhibitor. That's what this does. Alan Luther, the offensive tackle from Texas, wears this. You cannot sublux your right shoulder to keep it from dislocating. He is wearing that trying to play and trying to defend against the Aggie rush. Got to be pretty tough out there for the Longhorn offensive lineman. Let's go back upstairs. Well, they have come along with, with everything as far as technology, haven't they, Mike? Need a gun to stop being on the night, though. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Cool. Little stiff arm action on Grady Cavanis, and then will come out of bounds. Eventually, you just wear your defense down when you don't have any offense to complement it, and uh, the Texas defense looks like it's at that stage. 21 carries, 60 yards for Greg Hill. The Texas offensive line on the far side. Listening to their offensive line coach, Clovis Hale. Anthony Curl steps up and makes the hit on Carter. And that will be enough for the A&M first down as Right now, I don't imagine they would like to throw the football at all if they don't have to. Going to run the clock. Uh, Texas tonight is great play from their defensive front. And both safeties, uh, Garza, number 17, and, of course, Lance Gunn, the big, tall, strong safety, 6'3", 214, number 16. They played it very well in the secondary against the running game of a &M. again as the Aggies come back into the boundary Rapp was out there to push him out of bounds and you could see the marker that has been thrown that down at the 34 yard line Saturday Mike and I will uh, begin a triple header here on ESPN we will be in Birmingham Alabama for that matchup between the Auburn Tigers and the Crimson Tide of Alabama at their 56th meeting you talk about state bragging rights for 365 days of the year in the state of Alabama, they talk football. <laughs> Believe me. I mean, I'm living in Mobile, Alabama. They do not miss a day. I think you told me every one of those days as well, there's at least one Foul story. Off illegal procedure by the offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. I think you told me there's a story in the newspaper every day, even if it's baseball season or, or anything else. They could be talking about the Atlanta Braves doubleheader, but there's going to be something about Alabama and Auburn in there in football. <laughs> They take it serious in Alabama. And I bet those two teams are watching this game tonight and preparing for their big clash on Saturday. Carter. Oh, boy. He gets stuck by Patton okay. first. And then it's Anthony Curl, number 42, who steps up to make the hit. You know, I was interested in talking with David McWaves when he said that Curl, if they were to lose Rapp in the middle, that they would move Curl in as the middle linebacker. I said, Coach McWaves, he only weighs 195. And he said, yeah, but that's the safest place to put him when you've got Patton and uh, Tommy Jeter as the defensive stop. There's some big trees he can hide behind at that middle backer spot. Curl is small, but he packs quite a wallop. Richardson. Next stack went away, incomplete. Going to Mac Garza with the cover on Tony Harrison. So Saturday, the lineup is Auburn and Alabama. Then it is Miami at home, the top-ranked team of the nation against San Diego State. Then we head out to the islands and Hawaii, playing host to the Fighting Irish from Notre Dame. As you look at Revelin. A little TV time there. <laughs> And Bebo. Four of 12, one interception. The numbers on Bucky Richardson. Intercepted by Cavanis. And he is shoved out of bounds at the 49 yard line. Interesting call. Score 24 to 7. Roll Bucky Richardson the right. He just doesn't have anything on it. 
Ron, he's hurting. I'm telling you, he can't get enough on it. Watch this pass. Rose to the right. Just doesn't look like he gets anything on that football. Grady Kavnis, number 21, steps inside for the interception. Keith Alex, number 67, knocks him out of bounds. Kavanaugh had a touchdown return against TCU this year. Texas will go with the reverse. This is Duke. And that will be a couple of yards. It's on the ground. Who's got it? It looks like Shea Shafee, number 76 for the Longhorns, has made the recovery. And if he has, that's going to be enough for the first down. It's a good way to pick up an extra four <laughs> yards. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, just when you have your confidence level shaken like they have all year this offensive football team last year they made plays and came from behind and you had a, uh, the supporting cast uh, played but this year they just haven't been able to get it together on this side of the football that ball is loose again and to the 30 yard line is Shane Childers <laughs> But Texas had what five turnovers in the second half against Baylor. Well, that'll drive you crazy. David McWilliams is just trying to keep his young club in this. You see, the football is going to pop right out. No one hits him. Just kind of bounces out, hit against his pants. It, it looks as though Tom Penders has taken over the offense. He's teaching them to dribble. Dribble on the football. Pass complete to Curtis Thrift over the middle to the 23-yard line. Quentin Coriot, number 44, there to make the tackle. Come on, let's go, let's go. David McWilliams played at the University of Texas, was on a national championship team. Actually, was an academic All-American for the Longhorns, was a math major. Bill Brown has come to the ball, hand number 29 at running back. Brown with the handoff. Five and now counted off at 10 yards as Jason Atkinson is holding on to him. And the Longhorns will move the chains on that one with a first down there inside the 15. Well, Phil Brown came off the mark. 5'11, 196 pounds sophomore. Patrick Bates finally made the tackle on him, but uh, he really shot out of the backfield. Picked up good yardage. Four to seven, Texas A&M. We're about to go under 12 minutes left in the ball game. Bill Brown. Brown is finally stopped at the six-yard line. Coriad and Chris Crooms combining in the tackle. Now tried to get the football outside, and they pitched the ball outside and. Pretty good blocking, and they were able to cut off the linebackers. Quentin Coriot shot inside along with Jason Atkinson, and the toss play got it outside of the linebacker stun inside. Brown hit at the line of scrimmage, and Webb will take him down after he spun off one tackle. And because of a second effort, he got back to the line of scrimmage. He really got belted as soon as he got the football. Well, he, he was met by Jason Atkinson, number 43. Again, all evening, Texas A&M has been able to fire the linebackers. Watch number 43 on a stunt. No one picks him up. And he just misses the tackle, but he hits him in the backfield. You know, we, in the lineups tonight, we talked about him and the fact that he was so underrated. Atkinson now has 12 tackles in this game. Right? Tell you, they chase him. They're, they're always trying to get away. Quentin Coriat, Sam Adams, Marcus Buckley. And they're, they're trying to go to Jason Atkinson. He's pretty strong himself. On third down, Walker spins off a tackle, and I believe he will have the Texas first down. Derek Frazier, who's a junior out of Sugarland Clements, to make the stop. Well, there's no doubt that even if Texas does not pick it up here, that being down 24 to 7, that they will make it four downs. He didn't have it. Pete Gardner says just that much, just inches. 
Here's what you have to worry about here, Ron, if you're Texas. If you try to go up inside, you got those linebackers firing. I don't know if you want to take the ball off the line of scrimmage unless you toss it here. Peter Gardier may get it on the quarterback sneak. So close. I'd hesitate to take the ball off the line of scrimmage if I was David McWilliams here. Gardier, and he didn't get it. They timed that so well. I'm not sure they weren't off offside, JM. They were timed that perfectly, but I think they may have been offside. Texas is jumping and pointing toward Texas AM, and I think you're exactly right, Mike. Well, they went with the quarterback sneak. Peter Gardier, Quentin Coriot figured the same thing, and he met him. And, uh, about the time he got the snap of the football, but they were offside from first down now for Texas. I tell you, when you play these guys, when you take a quarterback sneak, you get hit too. I mean, you get <laughs> belted around by these AM defensive players. Lynn Amity on the sideline sending into play. There's the situation. Just over 10 minutes to play in the ball game. This is the eighth play of the Texas drive. Cuts it back up, and he got chilled by Quentin Coriot. Tried to run the toss sweep with two lead blockers into the short side of the field. You're going to see the toss sweep. Here's the toss to the tailback coming this way. But AM does a nice job of forcing the ball back up inside to the linebackers, Quentin Coriot and Jason Atkinson. Didn't allow him to get outside of the corner. Texas faked to the fullback and then made the handoff and almost made it to Mark Wheeler. And there was just nothing there for number 24, Roderick Walker. You could have had a little Polaroid camera taking a picture down there. All 22 guys are all together down there. Have to try to toss it and get outside of this AM defense. I'll tell you, just inside is just tough to get a yard against these guys. It's third down. Walker will score. Second touchdown for the freshman from Irving, Texas. Well, they came outside with a toss sweep and got good blocking and were able to get up inside and, and able to get in the end zone. Roderick Walker. 16 carries, 38 yards, and two touchdowns for him tonight. Greg Dickey makes it 24 to 14 and another look at the Texas touchdown. Here you see the toss play. Good blocking at the point of attack. Now Roderick Walker's going up inside, but he's going airborne. Gerald Crawford, number 37, with a very good block on the play and the reaction on the far sideline by Texas. Horns get on the board with their second touchdown. Let's take a break. 8.44 left to play crowd tonight and it's been a very loud one the fifth largest in Kyle Field history 76,532 and all five you talk about how big this game is and how important all five of the top five are games against Texas big rivalry college football at its best the color the pageantry the excitement the rivalries it's just unbelievable when you see a rivalry Texas Texas A&M and the rest of them all over the country. Just something to see. Well, the crowd got all fired up. It was getting their gigamaggy mass cheer ready, and the ball blew off the tee. Now, and it's a trick by Texas. Line drive, and we're going to onside kick it. And it was caught by Marlon Haynes. Nobody got fooled on that one. Ted 
Barnhill went back up. I guess the ball had not completely come off the tee like he was going to reset it. Then he turned and kicked it. I, I think it was a fake all the way, Ron. Yeah, what he to wanted be. to do is go up and make it look like he was going to readjust it. Now watch him turn real quick, kick the ball. But AM put a defensive back, Marlon Haynes, right up inside. They were expecting the onside kick. Richardson will take it. And Anthony Curl stops him just inside the 40. I'll be shocked and let, if we just we just don't see Texas A&M just run the football now. Try to work on the clock and try to grind out some yardage against this Texas defense. Some of the members of the core in attendance here tonight. Texas Aggies trying to come up with the best start since pretty while back. I guess it was 1975. Yeah. Emory Ballard. Get off to a 10 0 start that year. Carter takes it straight ahead. But you told me during the timeout you didn't think that the Aggies would throw into the pass tonight. No. And right now they're going along with uh, your thought as far as the game plan. As we've just gone under eight minutes to play in this one. This cotton bow game that we're going to see uh, Texas A&M against Florida State is going to be a pretty good football game. The cotton bows to be uh, credited. They're going to have a nice uh, match between these two football teams. a and strong. I was talking with one of the scouts from Florida State at halftime and his comment was he said wow these are two of the best defenses that, uh, that we've seen in a while. He'll tax the offense of Florida State. Bobby Bowden uh, will come up with a great game plan but he'll be taxed against this defense because they're so quick. Richardson wants a timeout. 7.29 left to play. AM by 10. Now the Texas Aggies picking cotton, and that they will do against the Seminoles of Florida State uh, in Dallas. Right now they lead 24 to 14. Oddly enough, Mike, every touchdown tonight has been scored into the win. But they also have come over, come after turnovers with the exception of one, right? That's exactly right. Dr. Jerry Punch has another report for us. Jerry. Gentlemen, if you take a look at Bucky Richardson's left wrist or left forearm, that's the Aggie quarterback, you'll see he's wearing a device called a wrist coach. What it basically is is a wristband that has a window. You see him looking down at that wrist coach. He is reading plays that are inserted inside the window by the offensive coordinator. They've practiced all week with a certain kind of play. He can glance at his left wrist and see what he wants to run, come to the line of scrimmage, and call the play. Back up there. Richardson back to Hill and that's Anthony Curl you can see him along with 16 Lance Gunn making the stop before that play Richardson with eight carries for 17 yards passing four of 13 two interceptions 60 yards his total output tonight 77 it's one of the lowest games he's had uh, the secondary of, of Texas Bobby Jack Wright the secondary coach you just watched Lance Gunn number 16 come up and make the play on the option the secondary for Texas is has had a good night against the AM passing game and also the rushing game. Watch for the shovel draw right here on this formation to the tailback. There it is. Little shovel pass into the middle and Hill breaks the tackle and is caught from behind by Chris Rapp. Now you want to show them what, what you're trying to do is show like it's going to be a pass but it's going to be a shovel draw to the tailback to the tight end side you want to spread them out make it look like a pass that becomes just like a draw play the underneath throw to Greg Hill there you see Bucky Richardson behind him just dropping back a little bit you see the cross blocking in the offensive line to set up the shovel draw Rodney Thompson the youngster out of Groton who has been so exciting in the other two games that we have carried of Texas A&M. And in case you missed those, this young fella led his high school, Groveton High School, to two state championships. He rushed for over 8,400 yards in high school. Not a lot of drop-off when he comes in and uh, and Hill leaves the ball game. Right there, right there. Wow, you talk about a play now that I put on all the videos across the country. This was going to be the gate play. 
and a reverse off the, the swinging gate play where Bucky Richardson just steps up, pitches the ball back, and then you have the reverse off of a trick play. And they've got the officials tricked also. Offsides against Texas. You're going to see Bucky Richardson on the left-hand side of your screen. See, he's like the center. They got all the linemen over here, except you got a little movement by both teams. You really had some movement, and there's the reverse off of the trick play. They called offsides on Texas. A little trickery. And David McWilliams is upset because he thought the Texas A&M people were moving also. A couple of the linemen were moving. Little Matt Garza comes into the ball game. Number 17. with the first down and it is a first and goal from the seven as Chris Rapp from the middle linebacking spot is there to make the tackle. ESPN's coverage of college basketball continues tomorrow night. It's the preseason NIT championship game. Georgia Tech against Oklahoma State in New York's Madison Square Garden. That's at 7.30 Eastern Time. Then at 9.30, number 20 ranked DePaul with all-star forward David Booth facing off against Memphis State. And of course, Anthony Hardaway, uh, along with David Vaughn, a couple of the stars for the Memphis State Tigers. That is at 9.30, all tomorrow night, right here on ESPN. Eighth play of the drive for AM, and Richardson is going to be hit and knocked down by Bo Robinson. Also, Boone Powell, 56, came in to help out. We're about to go under four minutes left in this one. There you see Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. Along with R.C. Slocum talking over the plays. What usually you have is two coaches up in the press box. And on those headsets, both the coaches up in the press box can talk to Bob Toledo and R.C. Slocum. All four of them are in on the conversation. Bob Toledo makes the final judgment on the play to be called. Richardson lobs it. Nobody is there. It's caught. And Doug Carter fell down. If Carter keeps his feet, he walks in. Caught Texas in man for man, brought the flanker in motion, picked the inside linebacker who has Doug Carter, just came, ran into him. The man that had Doug Carter got erased, and that's why Doug Carter was so open. He just couldn't keep his feet. You're right. He keeps his feet. He's in the end zone for an easy score. Tenth play of the drive, and his third down and goal. Toss sweep left. Breaks by a tackle and scores. He's going to play a lot of these rivalry games. Ron? Yeah, he's a young man. He's just a a freshman from Dallas Carter. He's got three more of these up coming up. 24 carries for 66 yards for him and two touchdowns. Benatulius. And one more look. The block on Cavanis. And the cut right there, and he gets by. Boone Powell, I believe, 56, yes, and Hill scores it. Let's take a break. It's Greg Hill time. That's what the hat says that he's been wearing around campus for low these many weeks. Look at this, 12 Great. touchdowns, A&M freshman record, and they are headed to the Cotton Bowl against Florida State. A lot of people brought their own cotton along tonight. man towels in abundance. A&M 31, Texas 14.
Tertullius with the kickoff. And this one will sail out the back of the end zone, and Adrian Walker can't do much about that. I'll be sure to get your first look at New Year's College freshman phenoms as Scholastic Sports America profiles the season's best high school players, plus a look at some great Turkey Day rivalries and scores from Thanksgiving high school games across the country. Dan Diebenham and Adrian Karsten will have the show for you. Scholastic Sports America Thanksgiving football special, and it follows next. This, by the way, the most points allowed by Texas in the regular season since 47 by Houston back in 1989. Gardere zips this pass, looking for his tight end, Curtis Thrift. Talk about the high school prospect show that's coming on after our game. Every coaching staff right now is meeting, sitting in those meeting rooms, deciding on the 25 players that they want across the country. The recruiting process will be speeding up here in the next few weeks. And every football team, if you lost and you had a bad year, you just look to recruiting to try to keep rebuilding. If you, you're winning, you enjoy it, but you're also out in the recruiting path because you know that's the three years from now, that's going to be the basis of your football team. Pass tipped, looking for thrift again, and that's Jason Atkinson who made the defensive play for Texas A&M. He may be a player that not a lot of people talk about on this defense, but he has had a big night against the Texas Longhorns. Game the lineups tonight. We talk about how underrated he is. And, and of course, when you got a guy like well, like Coriata, who is so flamboyant on the field, and not only makes the play, but makes the big play. A guy like Atkinson, a steady performer, sometimes gets lost in the shuffle. Buckley gets a lot of uh, height because of the the big play. Ball is loose, and the officials say Texas has recovered. So it is a fourth down. And the Longhorns will have to give it up with two minutes, 40 seconds left in this one. Ron, when you watch tape of Texas A&M, Jason Atkinson always comes to the front. He is, just what you say, a very steady football player. Kelly McClanahan. Ball just dying into the wind. The Aggies had nobody back to keep from having a turnover. It will be touched down at the 47 yard line. That's a kick of 28 yards. And now Texas A&M has to run off two minutes and 11 seconds. And just like the spirit in this stadium, the bonfire continues to glow. Part of the tradition here in Aggie Land. R.C. Slocum did it almost like the basketball coaches did. A little flair here. Sent him out on the field and then sent in his reserve, Granger, and allowed Bucky to come off. He now is 24, 5 and 1 as a starter for Texas A&M. Bucky Richardson. Randy Simmons, the ball carrier. Now a flag comes down. Dr. Jerry Punch, what do you have for us? Guys, a couple of games ago, we showed you one of the AM traditions was the yell leaders. Not cheerleaders, but yell leaders. They don't have cheers, they have yells. And also, they have ODs or officers of the day. And I'm with Eric Moore. And Eric, you're one of the ODs here today from company A1. Uh, what what an OD do? So, the, the officers of the day guard the field. It's a tradition here in Aggieland that no one goes on the field except for the players until the game is over. And then we keep everyone else off, too. Keeps the field clean, and it also keeps everyone from getting hurt. Also, Cobb Field is a memorial, and we protect the memorial here, sir. That's our that's our tradition here, and that's what we're doing here today. Another great tradition here in Aggie Land. Let's go back upstairs. They got two defenses. They one on the field, one off. <laughs> that's a great point. That penalty was against Texas, so it's a first down and five from the 42. Ranger turns and pitches back to McAfee. And Keith McAfee, a senior out of Sugarland Willow Ridge, will take it for the first down at the 30-yard line. By the way, Jeff Granger is a southpaw. I, 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 I don't know if we'll see him throw or not, but he is a heck of a pitcher for the Texas A&M baseball team. In fact, he made second-team All-American last year as a freshman.
Rodney Thomas tries to break away and he's going to be stopped at the 29 yard line. Anthony Curl and Grady Cavanis out there to make the stop. That young man had a big night. Quentin Coriat along with Jason Atkinson. Two outstanding linebackers. Last home game here at College Station. Tell the players that you always remember your last home game. And Quentin Coriat's not going to forget his. Randy Simmons, the senior out of McKinney, takes it down to the 23, and now we're under one minute. You see Boone Powell getting up off the stack. He is a senior. Last game for him out of Duncanville, Texas. Played he had an outstanding year. You're on the winning staff. It's a great feeling down on that sideline, Ron, to beat your arch rival. But if you're on that other side, all you can think of is recruit, 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 recruit. on the stop as Rodney Thomas took the pitch out and unless something happens that should do it. They will count it down as R.C. Slocum gets a bag. And a hug. <laughs> the cannon sounds. And the 98th edition of the Texas Texas A&M rivalry is complete. Once again, the final score, Texas A&M 31 and Texas 14. Stay tuned for the college football scoreboard, which follows next. Now for Mike Gottfried and Dr. Jerry Punch, I'm Ron Franklin saying so long from College Station, Texas.